Hi, everybody. My name is Teber, and uh, today I'm going to present uh, work, the hierarchical route to the emergence of leader nodes in real world networks. Uh, we've done in the Maxi at the University of Limerick, Ireland. So networks uh, have a graph associated with them. And one of the very first thing we learn uh, from graph theory is that graphs can be either undirected or directed. The only uh, a difference you can see by two, by, between my two diagrams here would be the arrows. We usually uh, represent uh, these graph structures with an adjacency matrix matrices. Uh, uh, that, that'll be my A here in each case. And you would uh, have a position one if two nodes uh, have an edge linking them and zero otherwise. And the difference then between undirected and directed would be that uh, my undirected adjacency matrix is symmetric and my directed doesn't need to be. But then in 2018, uh, Aslani et al. introduced the concept of non-normality, which actually uh, takes this, this binary property and bring it into something smooth. Now we can think of a spectrum of different adjacency matrices. And uh, you can think of uh, one extreme here. So on my left, I'm going to have something which is uh, uh, symmetric, right? So the equivalent to the undirected version of the network. And usually, we'll be talking about a single uh, strongly connected component if, if we have all nodes uh, in a single component. And in the other extreme, uh, we talk about the directed the cyclic graph. So that would be uh, the network associated to it would have all of this structure in just one triangle of the network. And in that case, we can actually talk about different heights, different levels, because there is a complete hierarchy of this uh, directed tree, if you will. So our uh, main question in this work here was to think, OK, if I'm navigating through my non-normality uh, space, at some point, uh, there will be some nodes uh, with no out degrees, so meaning that nodes that once I reach them, I can't go back. So we call them uh, sometimes leave, sometimes sync nodes. Here we're calling them leader nodes. And they are crucial uh, uh, for any spreading process taking uh, a place in the network because whatever is uh, using the network structure to transport, it will accumulate on these uh, nodes, right? That's that's what my figure is depicting here, the accumulation of something. Uh, in our case, it can be mass, energy, information, anything spreading over the network structure. So uh, at some points here, these leader nodes are the pink ones. At some points, they emerge. And in this work, we try to understand this emergence. OK, so that's our research question. So uh, in order to, to investigate that, we needed to uh, use a different, uh, another tool as well. Uh, we thought about the idea of a random walk through the network structure. The intuition being a random walker should be trapped into this leaf, into this uh, leader node, OK? So we can consider a transition matrix that will tell uh, the probability of walking from one uh, node to the next. Measure how random the walk is by uh, a measure of entropy rate introduced by Gomez Galvinius et al. Q is a steady state distribution. So this entropy rate is basically trying to capture what happens in some state of equilibrium. And the way I define my transition matrix here. So if you think of the leader node, it will have the out degree zero. So this whole measure here will collapse, okay? Because the transition uh, matrix term for a node with out degree zero will be zero. So basically, uh, the bigger this entropy rate is, the more random my walk is. 
And if it's zero, my, my walk is not random at all, which would be what you expect to happen uh, when you're talking about a, a walker trapped into an ether node. So uh, with these two things, uh, we set out to measure uh, the relationship of these two things, non-normality and, and uh, how random the walk is, uh, uh, if, if the leader uh, node makes it collapse or not, into uh, several real-world networks, in this case here, uh, 124, in six different domains. And first of all, uh, because our entropy <clears throat> doesn't have a natural scale, we actually use uh, this uh, um, this uh, ratio to bound uh, this measure of entropy rate. So it's basically calculating the entropy rate without a natural scale of uh, the adjacency of the network itself, and then divided by uh, the entropy rate of the symmetric version of it. That should be bigger. So after applying uh, calculating this relative entropy rate for all the networks, and also looking at their non-normality, we observe this uh, very interesting transition here. So basically what I'm saying here is that as I go uh, from zero to one of non-normality, so as I go from the symmetric to the forms which are very close to a uh, directed the sigma graph, the DAG, uh, there is a transition. So at some point leaders emerge and my entropy rates collapse. And you can see this transition going on for four out of the six domains uh, we measured. So uh, uh, the next step here was to think of a model to generate a synthetic network, which we could use to control <clears throat> the transition. And uh, we thought uh, uh, we were inspired by the B and Kony Barabashi model. And in our process, uh, first, the synthetic network is generated through a prices uh, preferential attachment model, but just the upper triangle. So uh, you do this first phase and it gets uh, DAG because you just have the upper triangle. Step of this, this uh, the synthetic model, we may reciprocate or not the link, so we may uh, uh, fill the, the lower triangle of the adjacency matrix of this network, depending on uh, uh, fitnesses, which are inversely proportional to each out degree of uh, the nodes. But the idea is these fitness are supposed to uh, go above a threshold we set with a parameter P. So we use this parameter P to control the non-normality of our resulting network. And uh, if P is set to zero, we're talking about a symmetric uh, uh, normal network. If P is one, we're talking about the DAG. So basically no edge is reciprocated in the lower triangle. So this is what you get uh, by running this model a lot of times. So each uh, value, each color here is a different network size. And uh, this parameter P, this control parameter, is in this x axis. And then the y axis is the relative entropy rate. So as you can see, uh, uh, the collapse happens uh, uh, pretty quickly. And the inset has a semi log version of, of the same plot. So each point here has 10,000 realizations of uh, this model. So at this point, at this plot, we went back to uh, our uh, transition that we can, could observe in four out of the six domains before. And we overlaid it uh, with the results of our synthetic model. And uh, the interesting thing here is that my control parameter P would be the black dash line. So I actually need a range of different, uh, different values of it to uh, uh, account for all the region of the transition. Another uh, uh, very curious uh, uh, aspect of these uh, leader nodes presence in the networks is that it actually allows us to uh, look at some hierarchy happening, even though it's they're not most of the cases they're not uh, uh, 
directed a cyclic graph, we have already uh, something to establish an orientation. So if you think uh, leader nodes ha have hierarchical number zero, I can also label other nodes uh, according to their shortest path distances to any leader uh, uh, with a hierarchical number as well. So if a node is one edge away from the leader, it, it receives hierarchical, hierarchical number one. If it's two edges away, it receives hierarchical number two and so on. So we did this hierarchical labeling for all of our networks and uh, produced these diagrams here. So the first one in the left. Uh, so these diagrams are for the word adjacency network of Dr. Seuss, Green Eggs and Ham book. The interesting thing here uh, in the diagram on the left is that we see an imbalance of edges. So most of the edges are actually pointing towards the leader. So the, most of the edges are in the orientation that points towards the leader, not away from it. Uh, we reproduce the same sort of diagram uh, in the right. So you can look at, at the, the pink node would be the leader. And one are actually all the nodes with hierarchical number one. And the edge thickness uh, represents how many edges uh, are going from one hierarchical level to another one. Another uh, interesting, very interesting thing we uh, uh, offered in this paper was a case study on, on uh, what is the effect of the leader's presence to a network structure, if you consider a dynamical process. So here, uh, we, our case study uses uh, an actual network of Japanese macaque monkeys, and uh, we applied uh, a very well, uh, very well known model of, of literature, which is called a Lee model. So if you consider there is this uh, uh, different equation here to describe how, let's say, x is some resource. And this equation describes how this uh, resource varies for each individual of the network. And most importantly, there is my diffusion term here inside of this uh, red square, which is dominated by this term. So sorry, the equation is dominated by this term. And there is uh, this Laplacian here. This Laplacian is actually the random walk Laplacian, which is based on the transition matrix uh, we talked earlier. So it is encoding uh, uh, the informations of the leader nodes here and the random walk as well. So uh, and this is a snapshot of the steady state, the resulting steady state on, on this network. And as, a, as you can see, there are only uh, three nodes which have uh, resources uh, bigger than zero, actually. Which that, those would be, so the leader, the one with the most uh, resources, uh, the guy at the top, and the two other nodes, uh, uh, which are in green, are the closest nodes to the leader. Here, we uh, didn't show uh, the edge arrows, so the, the visualization would be uh, better. But they are the only two close uh, nodes, and they are also actually uh, uh, benefited by their uh, uh, neighboring of the leader. Uh, this is a time evolution until uh, we got to that steady state. And this, uh, uh, so here each node has their own evolution of resources. And as we can see here, uh, the leader gets on top, and then the two other nodes get pretty close to it and also end up with uh, resources bigger than zero. In the inside, we have a linearized uh, version of that system, so solving a linearized version. And we can see that uh, uh, these two uh, uh, nodes immediately close to the leader, they have the biggest transient growth aside from the leader. So to wrap it all up, uh, we observed, characterized, and reproduced the emergence of uh, uh, leader nodes uh, when we navigate through the, the space of all different configurations of non normality. We also described this hierarchical structure uh, uh, by talking about the orientation created by the leader nodes. And we also uh, uh, provided a case study uh, for the dynamics on, on a network with a leader. 
I would like to thank uh, very much my collaborators for letting me uh, present this and for the brilliant work. And uh, these are the two references I used earlier. I would also like to thank the funding agencies. And there is a preprint you may check in this uh, link. Thanks very much for watching.